everyone. Welcome to episode 93, Press Any Key. This special everyone stay home episode. Because... Mike didn't stay home. <laughs> Mike left the country. Mike for sure didn't stay home. This is this the time. second time this year he's been on the run from the law. Dude, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks so Dude, much. He's, for he's a political to- refugee from, from Roku, Roku City. City. The fucking <laughs> Ro- Roku cops are after him. <laughs> They're after his lucky charms. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for joining us this week. It's episode ninety three. Uh, you can find us on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, and what's the other one? I guess this YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. At pressanykey.tv. And um, follow us there for more fun content and videos and good you stuff. you say b- videos with videos. a B? Videos, yeah. Like, Watch it for more videos. But, okay, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, all right. Um, so, with that being said, uh, Nick, the fuck are we yes. talking about this week? First of all, this is a catch up week, everybody. We were like, let's put stuff in the in this in this week because the next thing that's that like we're waiting on is Avatar. Like that's the next big thing. Oh, I'm wait. I'm so ready oh for the my, new Avatar this fucking guy. This fucking guy. This guy doesn't even look at that and be like, this is gonna be a great episode for our podcast. Oh boy, dude, I'm gonna be just I'm gonna be loud and proud. Okay, and you better be here. Anyway, uh, so what day? Uh, when is that? When does that come out? I don't know. All right. Well, I think if it's it, the 16th. uh, I think 16th Avatar of December, is the last show of the year. I well, you're sure. very lucky because I'm traveling as soon as that episode is over. <laughs> um, We're watching Avatar, and then I'm getting, I'm getting the fuck out of the country. I'm getting on a plane. I'm getting on a plane. Um. Okay. So, we, there was a movie called The Adam Project with Ryan Reynolds and Mark Ruffalo. I did not know it was in the movie either. Yeah. Uh, and Catherine Keener. Catherine Keener. Uh, Zoe some Saldana. little kid. Yeah, some little kid. And I heard it was good. Heard it was our. Uh, I heard it was good. I didn't hear it was like amazing, but I heard it was like uh, some of the like exact quotes. I heard it was like that was a darn good little movie and stuff like that. Um, we decided to finally like check that out. Circle back. Check out one of like Netflix's originals. Um, but before that. What's this? Uh, what's this shit about Hogwarts Legacy? Is what's it, this is I it hear? Out yet? Is it out yet? It's not out yet. Uh, how's my video right now? Am I like super dark? I'm trying to adjust my settings. I feel like I'm in shadow. Uh, anyway, so Hogwarts Legacy this week had a um, little gameplay. Uh, uh, what they call it? like a demo? Uh-huh. Uh, 40, 45 minutes. They showed us the character creator menu. They showed us a little bit like a small tour of Hogwarts. Uh, Lagwarts. <laughs> uh, and then they showed us a little bit of the combat system. So this is this is one game that I, I've been really looking forward to. The character creator system looks cool. I mean, like nothing really special about it, just like every other character creator. Um, what I was really excited about was the the exploring the castle, and it looks incredible. That's the thing I'm most excited about is to go uh, walk around and just kind of discover all the secrets. Walk around uh, the they, grounds, mm-hmm. see some hippogriffs. So, I mean, you said you watched some of it? I watched some gameplay video. I don't know if it's that. How long is it? How long ago is it from? It just it just came out like this past week. Oh, so um, there's I mean, there was some, but this was more or less like they had people like come in and like, you know, like it actually explain, break down the systems mm-hmm. and what you what, set your expectations pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So for, like, like I said, the biggest thing is the map and they gave, they didn't show you the whole school, but they did a walkthrough um, and just obviously the attention to detail seems incredible. And you think you want, look back at the movies and they this castle looked really cool. But this is just on a whole nother level to the fact where the biggest thing I notice is when you're walking around outside the castle, just the landscape is beautiful because mm-hmm. you're supposed to, I think you're supposed to be in Scotland. Whereas if you remember the movies, like you look out past the castle and it's just like just nothing for my there's not anything. Yeah. Whereas this it's like beautiful mountainscapes um, and some things are taking cues from the movies and some things are more in tune with the books and uh, and then the the only thing that I felt like I wasn't too in, into is like the battle uh, mechanics. It just it felt like 
there was there's some magic lost that the movie had as far as like wand play. So, I got to imagine that the battle, the combat is more or less the way you interact with it is if it would be like hand to hand combat or like third person shooting combat. But the it's way they, not they, really they, like a duel. It's like you're hitting each other with stuff like you're taking damage, you're blocking, you're parrying. Yeah, it's a combat yeah. system. It's not going to be like an actual from screen to like, right. You know well, the I mean? thing they they compare it to fencing almost like long distance fencing. Yeah, makes sense. But the thing is, it's like it, it is, it like it's less about um the, the speed of it and more just the way it looks visually. Oh yeah. Where think think about the way that spells looked in the movies, especially you think about the Harry and Voldemort duels, and it's like. Almost like the wands, the their the beams of light are oozing lava. You remember yeah. that? It like had this weird textury, very cool look to it. In this, it's just like bur- like very quick bursts, and th- like it just feels like explosions. It doesn't feel like magic. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't know. I'm not passing judgment just yet. But that was one thing that I noticed is the dueling system just looked a little generic to me. I can't wait for you to play this game. Why? Because this is like a proper triple A, like big budget title, and you don't play those, so it's gonna I be don't. like a kid in a candy store. All right, and you're gonna hate all of the stuff that like the the triple A people like. like exactly. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna have I mean? the complete opposite you're reaction. Be like, Dude, the combat system sucks, and we're all gonna be like, "What are you talking about? It's so flashy, and d- you could just hit any buttons at any time, and it'll work." <laughs> it looks. Uh, they uh, they have a system where it's like. They're quick draw spells. Like you have four slots for your like primary spells, but then they have like another system where like you know you if can... you hold like the shoulder button and then you hit a face button and you can cast that spell. Exactly. Yeah, so I mean, like a it, does, game right it looks it, that does look like really like really polished. Yeah. Um. And the one thing I thought was kind of interesting is the mini map just looks like a regular mini map. I'm like, you should have done the Marauders map as the mini map. What like I what a missed said opportunity that too. I said that the I, only thing I, is like the, the obviously the game I was on Reddit like a few weeks ago or some shit like that. I saw the game it. takes place before the the Marauders map was in was created, so I oh, get yeah. that. What's but, the time period again? Uh, eighteen hundreds. Eighteen hundreds. So, yeah. And there's a uh, a dwarven elven who's who's uh, that? Uh, um, yeah, some yeah, I think a dwarf dwarf uprising. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, who's mad? Uh, yeah, well, you know, right. there's going to be some dark wizards. Yes. It's not, it's true. not a JK Rowling property without some dark wizards. I know. I know. I want some copaganda too. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's exactly. I'm looking forward to. Looking forward yep. to righteous morality, yet still searing people alive mm-hmm. <laughs> that you have a different ideological. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have, we have a wrong. difference of opinion. Shoot them up. Yeah, exactly. Fire 17 um, warning spells. <laughs> <laughs> Right into his back. Right into his back while he's turned away. <laughs> the uh, they have a cool system. So apparently, your the main character is a, like a fifth year transfer student. So they have like a field guide thing, which is like a magical book that picks up you know like discoverables around the map to kind of explain why you know here's how you keep up with the other students. Uh, it, it seems like they really took care to uh, to the, to the details. Um, they implemented a like although like gobstones is a is a game in the movies in the books mm-hmm. you can't play it but it's there it's a thing that it's t- you know wizard chess you don't actually play it but it is a thing that exists in the world so they they put a lot of references in you know what you can't do though nick and i think What's this that? is a big missed opportunity that being said i also think the potential for it is to be like on the level of say something like rocket league is quidditch Oh yeah, that is astonishing that they didn't put that in there. But that's the thing is, I think they realize the potential of it, and they might be working on a Quidditch game. Just too. Have its own game. You know that would mean? make or sense. Or like DLC down the line. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or like some sort of live service. You know, something that's like they can actually like monetize. Like you know, that'd be great. What does your and you, you know, like? what is your person? You can make like? have teams and stuff. Yeah, you know, competitive great. Quidditch. Yeah, great. It's the most I'm, hateful I'm down game for it. in the wizarding world. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to it. What's the release date? Yeah. March, right? Um, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, first quarter of, of 2023. Yeah. For now. Yeah, I'll be streaming that shit for sure. 
And I guess one last thing, um, to to just to tie this all together. How do you feel about the lack of multiplayer? I don't. I don't, I'm not a multiplayer guy, so I'm I'm okay with that. Amazing, amazing. I'm a what, single player who, kind of boy. What do you? What like? I will say I was called out the other night by my friend because uh, he asked me how God of War was. I was like, oh, this is one of the best games I've ever played. He goes, honestly, Pat, I hear you say that about so many games like that <laughs> that I don't know if that is even valid anymore. I go, well, that's just my favorite type of game. You know, like that's just the ones that I like. So, the most. Yeah, you're always so going to rings all the bells that. and whistles. Like I have a ranking system of those type of games. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like um, the last two games of the year are that I'm looking forward to the most are single player, third person. Which games? Evil West. Well, at first it was God of War. God of War okay. Ragnarok. Yeah, that's which, out of the way. But not yet. I'm still doing all the side content. And it's some of the hardest battles in the game are in the side content. It's hard as fuck. Um, Evil West, which comes out this Tuesday. Okay. And then um, the Callisto Protocol, which comes out December 3rd. Which one is that? That's the, Dead, that's the one made by the original Dead Space team. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that looks good, too. So those are the last. So I got two more of those games for the rest of the year. Like, Call, Call of Duty came out this year. Have you heard me mention it? No, not at all. I yeah. didn't even know one came well, out this one, year. one, I know to keep it to myself. And two, it's Thank actually you. fantastic. <laughs> Warzone just dropped. But I don't really fuck with Warzone. I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know? Cool. You have a one life mode. Awesome. I'm so glad. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's move on. Yeah, anyway. So next we have James Wan and Jason Blum, two uh, horror icons, you could say at this point, right? Comfortably. I mean, they fucked up that yeah. last uh, that last Halloween trilogy pretty bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but as far as their original content. Yeah. As far as the stuff that they did that's good. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah the good stuff that they've done is good. Yeah. I think we can all agree on I think that. We all agree. That's just something we can all agree on. Um, but the two of them had decided to merge their companies, their production studios together. And in this little article from GameSpot from November 16th, titled James Wan and Jason Blum are merging their companies to create a horror powerhouse report. James Wan and Jason Blum are touching tips. Two official. <laughs> they are docking. Two <laughs> horror masters are about to expand their real estate. The New York Times is reporting that contemporary horror icons Jason Blum and James Wan, parentheses, except they really fucked up that Halloween trilogy recently, parentheses, <laughs> to soon merge their companies, Blumhouse Productions and Atomic Monster, respectively, into a monster house of horror. Blumhouse, known for its low-budget approach to horror movies, low, like low, low, low budget, ass budget, is currently under a first-look deal with Universal which would extend to Atomic Monster as long as the deal closes. One similar deal with Warner Brothers ended earlier this year after seven years. See this? What a play. What a play Universal's making. Yeah. Warner Brothers fell apart for like six months, and Universal was like, I got Christopher Nolan. I got James Wan. I got Jason Dude, Blum. What do you mean six months? I think it's ongoing. No, no, they're pulling themselves back up by their bootstraps right now. I don't know they? about that, man. They got Peter Safford and James Gunn now. Anyway. Well, well th I mean, that's the thing. It's like, we can hope for the future. I'm looking forward to that. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything until we start seeing some actual moves in the right direction. They're comfortably bailing out water. That's what I'll say right now. Okay, that's fair enough. They're, <laughs> they are comfortably they're not, not sinking, but they are still taking on water. Yes, agreed. Okay, so. Proceed, sir. <sighs> talking in the times blum talk talked god damn it talking spoke. talking to the times blum talked should be spoke, spoke about why the manager about why the merger i mean now that's just my bad eyes but the merger makes sense and how juan makes him feel complete as a filmmaker <laughs> juan completes me quote james is probably 70 to 80 percent the artist and 30 to 20 percent business person and I am the reverse, Blum explained. We really do complement each other, yin and yang, which is part of what makes this so exciting. 
After merging, it's expected that both production companies will continue to operate as their own labels, with each maintaining its own creative autonomy and sensibilities. Atomic Monster is expected to utilize its existing Blumhouse infrastructure to further scale its activities in film, television, and new content areas like podcasts, audio programs, and even video games. Blumhouse and Atomic Monsters have already collaborated on the upcoming Megan. You saw the trailer for Megan, right? I don't know what you're talking about. What? Oh, my God. All right, we got to do that. We, we're Is this something you covered while I was gone? I don't know. I don't know. The fucking the two of you have been in and out so much, I, I have no idea anymore <laughs> who <laughs> I talked about with who. Uh, uh, a sci-fi thriller about an AI doll that goes haywire and carnage follows, but the trailer is wild. The trailer is absolutely yeah, I, wild. Yeah, I have not seen anything about the this. The scene of the doll dancing went viral when the first trailer dropped earlier this fall. So, like, okay. yeah, they know what they're doing. So it's like a 21st century Chucky movie. Oh, worse. Worse. Worse in worse? the sense that, like, they really lean into it. Like, they okay. really go for it. <laughs> Whereas Chucky's kind of like a, you know. Like, wink, it's winking at winking you. Winking an odd. This is like, they're going for it. But they, but they know that it's ridiculous. Um, listen, good for these guys. Okay, <laughs> I, I agree. I like, I these are the new kings of of horror. I anything that they're doing together, I will be there for. Yeah, except Halloween movies. Well, yeah, but they didn't work. That wasn't a joint venture, right? That was just Blumhouse, just like fucking shit up. I believe it was Blumhouse and uh, Universal. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's not. I, I like I said, all I want is there is like their original content. Oh, I, I think it's like a the, the proven track record here is any property that goes on past like three three films is is already overstaying its welcome. There was no way to get another good Halloween movie. There was no. I mean, yeah. The first the first of this new trilogy was a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fluke, Pat. You're not understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. I guess there is always been more bad Halloween movies than there have been good ones. Well, after after two, the th- the third one, which I don't hate, but it's like that one's pretty hated by most fans. Yeah, and and like after that, ha- what other good Halloween movies have been? Have Zero. there been? Zip. Well, no, the twenty eighteen one. So I guess yeah, that is the fluke. Anyway, the fluke. um, listen, James Wan, he's he's finishing up, um, Aquaman right now. He is also doing another horror film, and he's starting another horror franchise. He did Malig- Trench. He did Malignant. No, the Trench got canceled. Uh, he did Malignant. <sighs> he did. Uh, what's that other one? And, oh, he's worked for Universal before because he did the the highest grossing um, Fast and Furious movie. I think it's like Furious Seven or whatever the fuck, right? Uh, made over a billion dollars. He wrote and directed that movie. Okay. So he's done good things with Universal. Oh, didn't he before. do the early the early ones too? No, he those are Saw. He did Saw. He didn't do an early Fast movie. No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, James Wan did Furious Seven, and it is the highest rated. It's the highest highest critically accepted, and the highest grossing one. And I don't believe that's an accident because James Wan actually knows how to make a movie. So they gave Fast and Furious to a guy who knew how to make a movie and knew how to make like characters interesting and like use action. And like I saw that movie when it came out and that set the bar for the rest of them because they've all sucked since then. So (laughs) yeah, I bet the rock put a curse on it. Dude, the rock is fucking franchise Viagra. Okay. He well, that's left. he left. He, he left, left and they made four hundred and five million dollars less than they did the year before. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Speaking of which, I heard that uh, like already, uh, uh, Wakanda Forever has already like blown out five hundred um, million. Five hundred million more than no, no, than no. Black Adam, or just oh, uh, all, all I'm saying is it's like it's already crushing Black Adam. Yeah, yeah. Um. So all of this, so while we're t- it's funny that we're talking about Fast and the Furious while we're talking about this, because on top of this news of them merging and this deal with Universal, Universal's kind of fucked right now because 
the budget for Fast and the Furious 10, I believe, at this point, has blown out to like $340 million. Oh, my God. This is on top of replacing a director like a week or two into production because he fucking hated Vin Diesel. Apparently, Vin Diesel came to set and is like out of shape and like doesn't know his lines <laughs> and like like really tired all the time. Um, How old is Vin Diesel at this point? Who even knows? Let's see, <laughs> even he doesn't know. That's what I'm saying. Who's to say? Vin Diesel's 55. Oh wow! I definitely thought he was older than that. Yeah. So he's, he's got he's got no excuse. He's timeless, Nick. Fucking Sylvester Stallone is still out there doing steroids. Where? What are you doing, Vin? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Vin. All right, get a regiment together. Hey, and get out there together. Um, but yeah, so he's still out there. He is. Uh, he's crushing it right now. But either way, yeah, it blew up to like three hundred, like close to like that's close to like Avengers Endgame, which I think came out to three fifty six, and it ain't gonna make that. It ain't gonna. It, it, it's just this it's is, not gonna make it back it is, there's no way there's just no you're way te- you're telling me they're not gonna make that money back no. what a surprise no no and i can't imagine the movie's gonna be good if they switch directors in the middle of the fucking movie you know no maybe I, the uh, the one example that i could give you where that did work out was uh tombstone i forget who originally directed it but like the director walked away and kurt russell took over as director and that movie fucking rocks. Kurt Russell directed that movie? Yeah, he took over, like, uh, like on set they lost the director, and Kurt Russell was like, I want to get this movie done. Shit. It's cool I don't think fuck. he... He's not credited as a director, I don't, I don't believe. Let me see. But yeah. Anyway, as okay. you were saying. Uh, but yeah, it's just interesting how all this new... Like, once again, this gets announced... While Fast and the while news comes out that Fast and the Furious is just shit in the bed. Yep. It's not coincidental. Mm-hmm. Um So the other thing that's kind of weird is like, all right, so Chinese Communist Party, right? <laughs> we don't like them. Okay, and, where are we going with this? And here's the deal. If here's the deal. If you yeah, want to do business in China, you're basically doing business with the Chinese Communist Party. Oh, you mean, are you talking about John Cena? Uh, I mean, like... Peripherally. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, I guess tangentially, but... Um, my point here is that Blizzard Games... Ah, uh, okay? okay. They are... Uh, they were not able to strike a deal with NetEast which is a Chinese like game developer and server distributor for their games to be played in China. Ultimately, that means they couldn't reach a deal with the you know, Chinese Communist Party, with the government over there. Right? That's what it is, right? That is yeah, actually, CCP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just making sure I wasn't saying some like charge term or something. No, no, you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the actual I'll term. I'll let you know if you yeah. say some dumbass shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, yeah, they couldn't reach a deal with the Chinese government to uh, be able to have their games played in their country. So as of, I believe, January 23rd, 2023, the titles like World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Diablo 3, Heroes of the Storm, Warcraft 3, Reforge, and Diablo 3 are going to be taken offline. Diablo Immortal will stay up as it's covered under a separate deal between Blizzard and NetEase. So... I mean, at least you can still play a mobile game over there. Well, only for like an hour a day, apparently. Yeah, that's crazy. So, I mean, like, this is, um, this is a big fucking deal. Like, this is going to hurt their business a lot. You well, know? Like you said, when you're, you're doing deals with the Chinese government, you know, it's shit's going to happen. I got no sympathy for you if you're, you're making deals with, with uh, yeah. Xi Jinping. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and this is like, just icing on the cake on top of all the other shit that came out about them last year. Yeah. Like, do you remember that? I do remember that. <laughs> How, then, their business practices are terrible. Yeah. And then Xbox bought them. And then they kept the guy who knew about all the terribleness. Remember that? Hey, man. 
I, I don't remember that part, but I do, yeah, I remember just, like, how fucking shitty they treat their people. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing, too, is that, like, um, these two companies, or I guess this one company, uh, uh, and government have worked together since 2008. So it's not like they didn't have an established partnership, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know what the fallout could have been, you know? Who knows? I like it's one of those things where maybe they were working on a deal and they just couldn't meet it like by a certain deadline. Who knows? Maybe. <clears throat> maybe they wanted to go to the other guy that was in with the fucking Chinese Communist Party. <laughs> anyway. What's next? What do we got? What else we got? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got Game Awards stuff. Woo! Game Awards 2022 nominees, everybody. What do we got? So, um, I usually pick out what we perceive to be the biggest categories of the night. That's usually Game of the Year, Best Game Direction, Best Performance, Best Gutters, <laughs> Best Gutters, Best Multiplayer. Probably Kratos, right? <laughs> yeah, best multiplayer and then content creator of the year. We okay. also have our own game awards. Oh, do we? I mean, yeah, but we're gonna get to those by the end of the year, before the show comes. I mean, before um, before the awards, awards. Yeah, yeah. Figure it out. All right, so let's take a look at some of these nominees. Let's start with game of the year. So we got A Plague Tale, Requiem. We were talking about that before. Did that show, just Nick? came out? That just came out, yeah. And it's and it's one it's or it's nominated for Game of the Year. That's crazy. I have crazy. to imagine it was a dry year. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you know, Gotham Knights also shit the bed. Dude, I can't imagine what the Everything. Chinese Game of the Year is going to be <laughs> with all the games they're losing now. So, uh the next obviously we have Elden Ring. Okay. God that seems like a front runner to me. God of War Ragnarok. Horizon Forbidden West. So probably Ragnarok or Elden Ring? Not done yet. Oh. Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Okay, yeah, so still Elden Ring or Ragnarok? And Stray. Ooh. I can't imagine that Stray will win, but I'm glad that it's in there. Yeah, I'm glad that it's nominated, but I can't imagine it's going to win. I have to imagine it's going to come down between Elden Ring and God of War. And yeah. if I were to put my money on one, I'm going to go. I was God a betting man. I'd go with God of War Ragnarok because I feel like it's got the same gameplay elements as Elden Ring and in the same, same difficulty too. I would say in some spots, like some of the one-on-one -on -one battles are fucking tough. Um, Ugh. tough, tough murder. <laughs> um, but the story and the presentation and the characters right. are absolutely incredible. So, uh, as somebody who didn't play Elden Ring, is is there a story to it, or is it just pretty much pretty loose? Yes, there is, but it's very subtle. It's told through the world and what you experience and documents you pick up and talking to strangers. Or you're so, like, hey, Mark, what does this thing mean? And he knows all the lore, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's how I experienced it. But I think Elden Ring is also for what that game set out to do, like it uh Elden Ring is a a once in a game experience, I think. You know? Once in a game or you once what <laughs> once in a game experience. So you it, it's got no, it's got no replayability is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't know. Uh once in a lifetime gaming experience, I'll say. Okay. Because the world is so meticulously crafted. Everything is so meticulously placed. Everything complements each other really well. You know, the meta around that game is awesome. The build system. Um, the combat is cool. The character design. Uh, the creature design. Also, the memes. This the sounds memes like a... Fucking well, sick. yeah. The, the thing that, like, turned me off about it, and again, I didn't play it, but I did watch some gameplay, is just the, the, the enemies just seemed so huge compared to your character model. I'm like, this is bullshit. Yeah, but that's fine. You get in there and you fuck them up. Yeah, I don't like that. 
So it's weird. I know that's a stu stupid complaint, <laughs> but that's my complaint. I put in 175 hours for Elden Ring because I got COVID and bronchitis back to back. Remember I got that? bronchitis. Yep. So you're a, right you're when, a regular sweet brown. Right when Elden Ring dropped is when I started playing it. I mean, is when I got those illnesses. I dropped 175 hours in that shit. Then, um, God of War has come out, and I have been playing that, and yet I, that's my pick, even though I've put in less hours. Interesting, right? But I think it's like you have a real love of that franchise. I have a real love of the of God of War twenty eighteen. You know, I didn't really, I didn't yeah. play any of the other ones beforehand. I've gone back and since played them, but even then, I'm just like, okay, these are cool action games, and especially God of War three. I haven't played mm. Ascension, but I want to. Um, and twenty eighteen, uh, that was the reason why I got a PS four. I got the fucking God of War PS four hanging on my wall, <laughs> like. <laughs> Um, but some of these other nominees are pretty good too. Like Horizon Forbidden West, that's on sale. That's on Black Friday sale. So I just picked that up for thirty bucks on PS Five. Um, a Plague Tale Requiem is on Xbox. Um, that like we talked about earlier, I'm definitely gonna check that it's out. It's on Game that Pass. Seems... Well, I wouldn't. I mean, like we should. Uh, we, we, what we should Pass. do is, I mean, it's only gonna cost you ten dollars then to play that game, and then you can just cancel it when you're done. Like you know what True. I mean? Um. But you know what I'll do though is I'll I'll get Game Pass and then I'll forget about it for six months. Yeah, but so then you I, can download State of Decay too, and we'll, we will play video games again together one we day. We'll Nick. play video we games. Will. <laughs> we will. Um. <laughs> so, uh, a Plague Tale Requiem, like as you said, is on Xbox Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, highly recommend go and check it out. Uh, we played, we all played Stray in the beginning of the year. That and was then, that was a great game. Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I have never played a Xenoblade game before, but I am looking for something to play on Switch. So I would not be go. opposed to checking it out because I heard it is a lot of fun. That uh, sounds like um that has that has nothing to do with the Alien franchise. I don't think so. I don't know what it has to do with anything. Um But all the I mean we should we should I mean I've already streamed a bunch of God of War. We can definitely get Mike to stream some Elden Ring. Oh, we could definitely do some streams of these games. There's no uh, multiplayer on uh, Plague Tale, I'm assuming? I don't think so, no. It's a very story, narrative-driven game. But there is multiplayer on Elden Ring. And there is... I mean, we've all played Stray, so... Um, Alright, let's see. What is our next category here? Best Game Direction. Let's see who we got. Okay. Ragnarok, I'm assuming, is in there. Wow. We got Elden Ring. We got God of War Ragnarok. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Immortality. And Stray. I would... The Stray would probably be my pick for this one. Yeah, you think so? Tell me why. That's again... It, it's like... It's so... Like, that game is... Like it's it tells a beautiful story without any dialogue at all, um, and you know, it's it it's it's beautiful. the The settings are beautiful. the The way that you interact with the environment is fantastic. Again, it's like it's it's through a cat's eyes. That's that's impressive. So, I would say it has it has more of a shot for this category than <laughs> Game of the Year. Um. Yeah, the only other games besides Stray I've experienced on here are Elden Ring and God of War, and you know my pick. Mm -hmm. So, sorry. Sorry, God of, uh, there, a God of War game came out this year, everybody. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> my picks are going to be a little biased. <laughs> okay? So, best performance. Now, I want to know what they mean by, like, is it just anybody? Okay, here we go. Sexually. <laughs> Stray. <laughs> Cat. Okay, so we have um, Ashley Burke, or Birch, Horizon Forbidden West. I assume she plays Aloy. We have A Plague Tale's Charlotte McBurney. Uh, I'm assuming she plays uh, Anicia, who's the main character in that game. 
We have God of Wars, Ragnaroks, Christopher Judge. Oh, we have Immortalities, Manon Gage. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with her. I don't know. And then God of War again, Ragnarok with Sonny Soljic, and that is um, Atreus. Bo okay, boy. 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 I'm going to go with him. Are you going to go with him? Yeah, I'm going to pick the boy. I'm going to go with Christopher Judge. Okay. So, that's your right as an yes, American? Yes. I, that being said, I haven't, I, I have not played Plague Tale all the way through. I've only played that first like hour or two. And I have not even touched Horizon Forbidden West. So really, I don't know what they're stacked up against. But right now, right. if I had to pick any of them, I'm going with Christopher Judge. I'm going with Mike Judge. <laughs> All right, best multiplayer. Let's see it. What do we got here? Call of Duty Modern oh. Warfare 2. Okay. It's good. It's good this year. It's an Infinity Ward uh, Call of Duty, so it's a good one. I, I've been enjoying it. I can't believe, man, they made the fucking UI so bad, but that's fixable. Um, multiverses. Okay, interesting. That is the Warner Brothers Super Smash. Yep, I remember. <laughs> Try to forget, but I can't. It's good. Then we have uh, Overwatch 2 from Blizzard, which is really just Overwatch, the update. Um, Splatoon 3. I've never played a Splatoon game before, but I've heard it's very good. Really? And this one I did not see coming. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. All right. That's my choice. Uh, yeah, I'm going to... Um, actually, but in all honesty, game. probably read, read them through again real quick. Modern Warfare 2, Multiverses, mm -hmm. Overwatch 2, Splatoon 3. Overwatch? I, I think actually Overwatch or Splatoon are probably the front run I would runners. Say multi, I would say Overwatch 2 or COD. All right. That's truthfully. And, uh, all right. And in that case, then, I'm, I'm like, going to... Even in then, it's like 70-30 Overwatch. <laughs> like... Yeah. I'm going to... All right. So in that case, if you're going Overwatch, I'm going Splatoon. We should we should find out how to play that fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. That's true. I'd be down. So then we have content creator of the year. Oh my god! How yeah. many spots did the three of us take? Uh, none. A single none. One. Oh. I don't know who any of these people are besides. Oh, uh, D Donald Trump <laughs> on fucking on Truth Twitter. Social <laughs> on Twitter. He's back, everyone. He's back. So there's. Is somebody named Carl Jacobs? Carl's Jr. Carl Jr.'s. Then there's Ludwig. Okay. Uh, Nibelian. Uh, Nobru or Nobra. And then Cutie Cinderella or Quintus Cinderella. Whatever the fuck. I don't I know. Feel like, I feel like I feel such an old such man a right now. Old person right now. What do, what do you think? What do you think would be like best VR? Like what games got nominated for? Oh. Okay, best VR games. Oh, probably Among Us. Yeah, it did. I haven't tried it yet, but I do want to try it. Yeah, um, I watched some gameplay footage. Uh, Call me Kevin. Did uh, that looks like so much fun in VR. Yeah, it did get a nomination. Let's see, best action game. Let's see, Bayonetta three, COD, Neon White, Saifu. I forgot that even came out this year, and that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game. Damn, cleaning best it up. Best action adventure is. Literally, all the it's Stray, Horizon, God of War, A Plague Tale, Requiem, and then Tunic. I don't know what game that is, but it looks like a game Mike Burke will play. Um, <laughs> it does. He likes indie games. Yeah. Um, most anticipated game. What the fuck? Okay, interesting. Looking forward. This is a this is an interesting list. So this is what we have coming in 2023, and I think. Uh, What'd you say? I said okay. Final Fantasy 16. Okay. Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts. Resident Evil 4. Mm hmm. Starfield. And The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Ooh. 
I uh, I will have my money on Starfield or Legend of Zelda. And yeah. there's two other games I want to play more than those on that list. Logwarts. Logwarts. And um <laughs> the Hogwarts and um Resident Evil 4. I mean they're remaking yeah. my favorite game of all time. Of all time. You hear that? I just that Legend of Zelda game I feel like is people are gonna eat that shit up. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna play the fuck out of that game. What are you not gonna play it? I've never played a single Legend of Zelda game ever. Dude, neither did I. And then I played Breath of the Wild and I was like, I just, oh dude, my fucking, God. I just don't want to play anything on a Switch with those little tiny ass fucking baby Get controllers. Get a pro controller then. How, how, what, what, what is it like? It's a regular controller? Yeah, and it's wireless. All right, maybe, maybe I'll do that then. I hate the, I hate the Joy Con. Yeah, I mean you don't. You can also put those in the thing, and like that becomes. I still, I just like the little, <laughs> you know, you little, you know. How am I supposed to work with that? Um, okay. I so, did play. I played like three or four hours of Breath of the Wild, and it was even with the how much I hate the Joy-Con, it was a lot of fun. So, and then we have, um. I, let's choose let's choose one last category to go over um gutters of the year that's gutters of the year let's do um let's do one for mike burke he's not here let's do best indie game okay all right we'll choose for him okay uh, i'm gonna assume plague tales on there it is not uh Interesting. cult of the lamb okay neon white Okay, another two I haven't heard of. Saifu. Okay, I've heard of that one. Don't know anything about it. Stray. All right. And Tunic. All right, I got to go with Stray. Yeah, for me, it's either Stray or Cult of the Lamb, but I know a lot of well, people like Saifu. That would, that, that, a lot of people were talking about Sifu, right? Yeah, 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 but I don't think as many people were talking about that as compared to Cult. Like, even Liz played Cult of the Lamb, you know? Okay, what's that? It's a game where you're literally a lamb that has oh. a cult. Sacrifice no, your other lambs to like demons and stuff, and you uh, have prayers and you farm, and it's, it's good shit. Liz likes it. I say she's it's good shit, it, but she's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Speaking no. of no. Speaking of no. Uh, what a transition. We watched the Adam Project, everybody. Yeah, we did. I'm glad. I really, I really wasn't anticipating us to both be on the same page with this. I um, I don't think we are on the same page. Oh. All right. Well, you want to just give me your overall thoughts? Let's. I truthfully, I wanted to say that I think we should actually have a small non-spoiler section in the beginning of this review because okay, I actually enjoyed it by the end, oh. genuinely, and. I think that okay. um if you're looking for I, a if you're looking for a good time to pass time, this is the definition of being good enough. <laughs> like, see, I I agree with that. Okay. It was it was a fine movie. Fine. Ex but extremely forgettable. There was nothing like no nothing that uh, I mean. If I compared it to other like movies in the in the sci-fi genre that I really love, there's a spark there, you know, with Star Wars, Back to the Future, something that just like makes it just so special and endearing. This was just like, hey, I like Ryan Reynolds, I like sci-fi, but it was just base level generic sci-fi all the way. The only thing that really made it anything more than that was just Ryan Reynolds is funny. The kid was really good. Um, and that was about it. So, that made it a step above. Some notes I have here. Uh, the writing, specifically, the moment-to-moment -moment dialogue, like when ex when certain characters are explaining a situation to other characters, it is just word vomit. But mm -hmm. then when they explain the reason why and the emotion behind why they did such actions. And this happens multiple times in the movie. It could be a combination of the performances, the way it's framed, like the direction. But it gets super, super emotional at times. Like, 
overwhelmingly like up and down up and like the entire movie it's like the action is like, like it stays on this like we're good enough good enough and then they have these really intimate scenes which i think elevate the material just enough I would agree to, with that to keep you emotionally invested because there's like a couple really heart-wrenching fucking scenes in this movie that i was not expecting um but the but literally like the ways some of the characters spoke to each other about those emotions or like why they had those emotions was just like, this is years of therapy that just came out in a paragraph. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. I would say like, I, while I agree with you that it's like the emotional stuff is good. I do feel like at times it's unearned, you know, it's just like, you can't just have an emotional scene because it's like now it, the movie calls for one. The stuff with the mom is earned because we've seen relationship between mother and son. The stuff with Mark Ruffalo, that stuff felt unearned to me. Like there is, you know, you have show, you have to show that. You can't just be like, well, I feel this way because of I just said that I feel this way. Yeah, it's also like, you know, um, you're 31 and I'm... And I've got relationships with my parents. Right. And I'm going to be 30. And like this movie is like literally like he's looking back on himself how many years later and like saying to like, I feel like that resonates with a lot of people in our age group who are like aging that are like, oh, I wish I had the last decade back. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could go back 10 years ago and tell myself to not be an asshole in this situation or to like approach this differently or don't do that or you should do that. You know what I mean? Like. And it felt very back to the future in a way. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Very back to the future. And I appreciated that. I was like, that made me be like, hmm, I want to watch the Back to the Future trilogy. Like, um, I did. Uh, I spent, it was either the day of that, the day that I watched this movie or the day before, I spent the afternoon with my dad. Um, so, like, after I watched this movie, I texted, I was like, hey, dad, glad we got to hang out. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, better tell him. Yeah, yeah, I had I had some moments for sure. Yeah, <laughs> sitting there like <laughs> Liz is like, like I got you're something on, in my eye. You're on painkillers, <laughs> shut up. Uh, <laughs> that being said, the performances are, I think the performances are great. I think uh, everybody was told to act like they were in a Marvel movie. Yeah, and everybody did that. Like that's that's job well done as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's great to see Mark Ruffalo play a character that's like Hulk adjacent, but not actually Bruce Banner. Yeah, you know all right, what I mean? all right. Br- brilliant scientist. Uh, there's a couple times where his anger gets the better of him. <laughs> what do you think about Catherine Catherine Keener's performance? I felt so like it was miscast. a little like so miscast. like just like generic villainy, and I like her in general. I think she's great, but see. I it's not that I don't like her. It's just that like I think that that role need to be filled by an actor with more gusto. Not gusto, but more like a more imposing you know. Yeah, she was just like ev- like evil billionaire. Yeah. Which is fine fine, but also she's like manning gunships and shit. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. It's it's a it's a weird. What do you think? What do you think about the deep fake? Wait, what was the deep fake? The younger version of her. Oh yeah, that was um. I didn't there was notice. Times, so there was times where it was good, and there was other times where it was like very noticeable. Um, but yeah, everyone. I, I just good. always everyone's just good. cast the younger actor, in my <laughs> opinion. Just <laughs> everyone's good. I just, I just, I think she was miscast. Yeah. Um. The kid can be a little bit annoying too at times, but overall, I think he's he supposed okay. he's supposed to be annoying though. I feel like that's what everybody says about kids in movies that where the kid is has like some good scenes here and there, and everyone's like, "Well, he's supposed to like no fuck you." Like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm. Well, like I don't. I I missed all that you cut out for a second. Um. For for, so, for the way I saw it was it's like. This kid is playing a young Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is like a little shit in general. He's yeah. very funny, so it's like, okay, well, the, we'll get this kid who's a little shit. Yeah. Um. What do you think about the? Well, all right, that's in spoilers. But 
Yeah, overall, I would give this like an eight. I'd probably give it a seven. Yeah. Give it yeah, like it was it was good. It was fun for an hour forty five. It was nice and short. Yeah. Um but it, I don't it, think it's it any it didn't suck. That's what's important. It didn't suck. It doesn't suck. It's actually I all right. I don't think it really like like we said, it doesn't rise above anything. You know, it's just like uh nice I'll never think about it ever, ever yeah, again. I'll, I'll never think like about this movie ever. I, I put I didn't start that movie and my expectations weren't Dune. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I think about Dune so often. Yeah. Like I think about those landscapes. I think about the performances, like or those mm -hmm. imagery, the imagery in my head, or when he spits. Like I think about that shit. Where yeah. this, the only things I will think about are like really the performances and like the more intimate scenes because I feel like yeah. those are really are done really well. But everything else around it is just kind of like you said, generic and like. Well, even like the, I thought the world of the, we, we didn't even see the future. Really. There was only a couple of scenes and it was like in sky battles. I thought the tech was very generic and, and they reference other sci-fi movies. So like, oh, it's a lightsaber. Um, like, yeah, you I mean, know, it did, it, it, it didn't. Like... Yeah. So it's like, none of that really felt like they took the time to develop um, a, a, a world of its own. It was just like sci-fi referencing other sci-fi for the sake of sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of lame. But uh, all right, so let's do spoilers now. Um, Mark Ruffalo dies. That was brutal when they're in the hotel and the kid is like, little Ryan Reynolds is like, I have something I have to tell you. He's like, you can't tell me. I, I can't hear it. He's like, no, I gotta you go. You know, you know that's a Back to the Future reference, right? No, I did not know that. Um, I mean, uh, when uh, Marty and Doc are setting up the, you know, the cable to the clock tower, and Marty writes a letter to uh, Doc's like, "No, you can't tell me about the future. It's my destiny." Like, you know, the whole yeah. the whole thing is, uh, you know, like in the beginning of Back to the Future, Doc gets shot by Libyan like terrorists yeah. and Marty's trying to tell him you're going to die. And Doc is like, I can't know about the future. So yeah, that was like a, a Back to the Future type moment. Yeah. It was weird though. Cause I thought I heard dialogue in the beginning of the movie that said like, do I remember this? Do you remember this? Like older you coming back into meeting right. me. Right. And they said, like, no, because the loop closes. When I go back to my normal time, our memories will reconcile this, and we won't have yeah. any recollection of this. So I was like, okay, that's a new and interesting way to be like, let's just fuck shit up, and everything will be yeah. all right. Um, but then they just throw that out the window, like, a couple scenes later, and then everything's talking about getting back to your time. Like, you don't know how much damage you're doing. And then... Um, well, no, they, I, they don't, the they don't throw lady, it out. The villain... Mm -hmm. They talk about how much damage she's done by going back in time and giving herself information, all this stuff, and, like, all the shit that she causes in the future and everything. They never explain what it is that she's actually done other than capitalizing on time travel. Well, that's like, what I'm talking about. Is like is they, it, you know? they, don't, they don't flesh out the future. And the, at one point they reference, it's like, oh, have you seen Terminator 2 Judgment Day? That's how bad the future is. And it's like, okay, so number one, you're just – referencing another sci-fi classic and avoiding showing us a cool future, you know, where things are bad. So, um, but I, I do, th going back to the point you were talking about where it's like, uh, do, like they can do damage and oh, I guess no, because then Catherine Keener's memory would reform around whatever future she goes back to. They got like a time cop thing going on where you're not allowed to change the past. Yeah, no, you're right. The rules right. kind of don't make yeah, sense. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing is that first they set it up to where it's like, it's fine. Like, we can, we got to do what we got to do and get the fuck out of here. And then to add this extra layer of tension when they meet the dad, the dad is like, that's not how that works at all. Like, this is, but you know how bad this is. And then Ron Reynolds' character is like, yeah, I know how bad. It's like, but you were the one that told us about the memory reconciliation. So what mm -hmm. happened? Like, that's like, that, that does happen in this movie. Um, but even then, I just kind of like, I threw. I was just like, yeah, with that. with with a lot of sci-fi, <laughs> that it's like 
as it's long good as there makes sense, you know what I mean. That's but it doesn't. But it doesn't have. It doesn't, ha- it doesn't, doesn't have, to. have to. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. With with those type of of heady concepts, it doesn't necessarily need to always wrap up in a perfect bow. It's sci-fi. It's it's we're playing with very experimental ideas. What did you think of Jennifer Garner? I thought she was great. Yeah. You think so? I, it was weird. It was weird that she was in this movie. It felt yeah. like. What are you doing here? Yeah, but I thought like, she was great. Hey, I didn't know that you knew these guys. You know what I mean? That's what it felt like. It's like running yeah. into somebody else. Like just the other night, I went to my buddy's 30th birthday party and I reach into the beer to get a. I mean, reach into the beer. I reach into the fr- package. And they're like, pack the your hands yeah. out of the beers. I reach into the fridge to grab a, uh, a nooner. And um, when I get it, when I pull it out, I look up. Uh, Liz's cousin is Jennifer there. Garner is there. Jennifer Garner, no. Liz's cousin is like, what are you doing here? I was like, what, what, what are you doing here? I've been coming to these events for like 15 years. Like, who are you? <laughs> like, I didn't know you knew these people. And that's exactly yep. what it felt like when she showed up on screen. I was like, what are you doing here? Like, I don't even know what she's been doing in oh, her career didn't recently. Oh, mentioned Zoe Saldana. Yeah, she was great. I mean, there's not really much to be said. She fucking nailed it. Yeah. She, she, I would equate it to a feature on a song, you know. She rolled. Yeah. Up, she had. She, she sings her own verse, some parts of the bridge, and some parts of the last chorus, and her parts are excellent. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Um, her death scene too was also pretty emotional. It's like, god damn, yo, this movie's actually really good at like making you give a shit about people right before they like right before they drop like. A yep. tragedy bomb on them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, that's one aspect of the movie I think uh, we can talk about openly now that we're in spoilers. Um, He finds his wife, Zoe Saldana, mm-hmm. and then they go to erase time travel, which is the father's life's work, <laughs> and... um, yeah, You know what that's a reference to? What? Another Terminator reference where they got to get Miles Dyson to go to fucking oh, Cyberdyne yeah, yeah. and fucking like let's shut this shit down, You're the blow it up. Time travel guy, man. I, did not I am the time this. travel guy. I did not realize this. That's, that's my one role on the show is I know a lot about time travel movies. <laughs> um, it's funny that we're talking about this because like a couple months ago when I was doing a show, I was talking to my buddy Mark about time travel. And how like Rogan used to be awesome when I was like, yeah, they used to just smoke weed and talk about time travel. And when I said that, I had a hot mic. So the whole house, I guess, just heard me say, like the audience that's coming in heard me say, bro, I miss when Rogan was good. All they did was smoke weed and talk about time travel and aliens, but not like time travel. Like, like, and then like, I started going into it, how like the moment somebody invents time travel, time is no longer linear. So like, Mm -hmm. it's like when you invent time, when, if you invent time travel right now, right? You can't get in that time machine and go back because there was no time machine back well, then. Well, it you depends on the forward. type of it depends on the type of time machine. Yes, I guess so. I mean, I don't really know the the ups and downs of time machines, but whatever. I, model, I do know what is the realist. Yeah. Apparently, like the there are like say, I mean, like, there is theory, there are different theories of how a time machine would would work, and the only one that's even close to potentially we could actually make is that kind where it only goes back as far as when you turn it on. Yeah. It's like shadow play, but for time. Yes, exactly. It's shadow play for real life. Yes. Shadow play is time travel. It's the precursor to time travel. Um, Heard it here first. But my my thing was is that um, is that they so they get rid of time travel and then the and then this movie had like uh Lord of the Rings it had three different endings the son reconciles with his mom with Jennifer Garner remember mm-hmm. um yeah he's a good son the uh the dad doesn't work for the crazy lady anymore but he does die he does die and um they meet in flight school what yeah which is like wild that that and then um yeah like why would he still wind up in flight why would he wind up in flight school when the whole reason he went to flight school was because of all the time travel stuff yeah like why would he ever wind up there the other thing is that like they said like you'll still remember an echo of me 
Yeah. And it looked like they, and he said, like, I found you. So uh, that's like a hint. Like he still knows, and maybe she knows. I don't. Even, I don't even think don't they think like they, they don't consciously know. They yeah. subconsciously do. Yeah. And they have the exact same conversation that they had the first time they met. Yeah. So time remains unchanged. Somehow. Except and I won't. I, I'm not. I'm not taking away points for that. Like again, a new bubonic plague on the way. So keep yeah. going, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> that's why they, they they're calling it the new boo. New boo. New boo on the way. <laughs> Yeah, um, Ryan Reynolds, uh, he was fucking around in Africa. He was hanging out with some monkeys in, in the jungle, and now he brought it back, a new plague. Now it's everywhere. Now it's everywhere. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm i trying to think of anything else that really stood out to me that I think is notable to talk about. What do you think of his little his little stick there? His little, his little light it stick. Was, I just thought, the, like, all the designs of all the tech was just super generic. It was a cool weapon, but like, uh, what was the the stormtrooper type guys? Were they people or were they robots or what were they? I think they're cyborgs. Cyborgs. I don't know. Um, they. I like. That, um, I, I did like the whole like. The one thing I question is there's one scene where he like sticks it in the ground and it creates this like shock wave and like sends all these guys back. Mm -hmm. How did he not get hit with that? And the kid was right right yeah. next to him. So I was like, how did they not get hit with? Uh, a circular, you know, shockwave. Like, how do you? Keep oh, it was. Uh, it was direction? not an omnidirectional. It was a yeah. fucking. It's a cardioid it's weapon. A cardioid <laughs> shockwave. Yeah. So as long as you're back behind these two lines, you won't get hit. Yeah. Um. Look at us using our, uh, using music science. Um. <laughs> I like. Mike when, would be so proud. Uh, I liked when they they killed guys and they like. Turn, turn into, into dust. They turn into RGB. Yeah. Um, they like, do you know what it's like to die outside of your own of your like whatever time and like that's what happens to them? I oh, is that what that was? That's what that was. Yeah. Oh. Um. They turn into fucking Mike TV from uh, Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's just like it was a cool idea to get around like having to have blood, and mm -hmm. you can still like do like really fucked up stuff, like cut people in half, and they just like turn into like. Fairy dust, you know. I, I thought it was okay. I thought it like that's the thing is for me if I'm going into a sci-fi movie, I want you to do the work, and it, they didn't really do the work. They just it was all surface level. Yeah, good sci-fi also has really good commentary too, and this just really was like a family story. Which it was a family story. I mean, there was a little bit of commentary, a little bit on like, uh, corporate greed. I guess yeah, maybe. But the, the corporations at this point are like, keep talking about it, bitches, and then they're just gonna keep taking. So, really, yeah. what's the commentary? You know? Oh, the oh, corporations the scene, are greedy for capitalistic endeavors. Never heard yeah. of that one before. The uh, the scene in like the reactor room or whatever, that fight scene with the like everything was magnetized, and the the scene where the bullet gets caught in the magnetic. Oh, actually, that was, that was a cool twist. That was cool as fuck. Because I thought that I thought what was gonna happen was we'd have this unintentionally hilarious moment where the deep fake um would grow a conscience and like would throw yes. herself in front of the bullet. That's what I thought but was no. gonna happen. No, no, no. That electromagnetic shit. I saw that happen. I was like, oh not okay. See, and that was it. Like that's what I'm saying. There's these little nuggets yep. that like really elevate the material that do that do make it like like maybe if someone had like he had more focus you know or a tighter script you know yeah uh, are you familiar with the director no who is it his name is sean levy and he will be directing deadpool 3 uh, with ryan reynolds and hugh jackman sean levy what else has he done oh he did arrival he did free guy mm -hmm. okay wait sean he did levy did arrival uh that's what he's no it was a producer producer on it yeah i was gonna say i'm My pretty mistake. sure that's uh director Danny Velnu. oh what starman are they remaking they're remaking starman and he's directing it oh he directed 10 episodes of stranger things oh yeah deadpool all right 3, the adam project he directed free guy the museum the secret of the tomb 
Real uh, Steel. This oh, he directed Real Steel. I like that movie. Yeah. Uh, the internship. I don't like that he, movie. He did a, a Beyonce music video. He did Big Fat Liar in two thousand and two. Did Birds of Prey? Did we Cheaper say that by the dozen. Damn, I've been All watching right. this guy's movies for years. Actually, the Pink Panther. We just didn't know it. Oh, Museum. just what's just in time? That sounds familiar. Nope, not what I thought it was. Oh no, not a time travel movie. Dude, he made what ha what happened what happens in Vegas. Oh, dude, this guy's like king of the rom com too. Well, there you go. That's why he knows Jennifer Garner. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were like, we need some uh, rom com cred. So yeah, he is uh, the he has a history of making these uh everything's just fine with nuggets of greatness in it. All right. I uh I got two notes. I just pulled up my notes from when I was watching the movie. One of the things that mag magnetic scene in the reactor room, there was only one thing that didn't get magnetized and it was the lightsaber thing. Uh, that should have yeah. that was kind of a little a little bit of a plot hole is that should have gotten pulled into the reactor. And then the other thing was the motel that they stay at with Mark Ruffalo. It was called the Pine Ridge Motel. Uh and the logo was made up of two like two triangles uh in the background and one big triangle in the foreground i don't know if this was intentional but if you remember from back to the future there's a little in joke where in the beginning they meet up at the twin pine mall then marty goes back in time and runs over one of the pine trees from farmer peabody's pine tree farm and when he comes back from the past it's now the lone pine mall so I think the logo of the Pine Ridge Motel is a reference to the Twin Pines McDonald's. Mall and Back to the Yeah, Futures. you're right. It is McDonald's. <laughs> not it, the Golden Arches. It does look like the Golden Arches. No, um, I did not know that. That is... You don't know that? You never saw that? The Twin Pines Mall thing? No. That's, that's a good one. All right, well, I'll have to write it down. Okay. Write it down. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so overall, between the two of us, we're giving this a seven and a half. Seven and a half, yeah. It's it's good. It, it rides the line of good enough the entire time, and I like that. Um. So yeah, cup of the week time. Oh yeah. I don't have a um. Just sing it. Just sing it. Um. Well, I I have some drops. Oh here. yeah, it's the clip of the, the week. week. Uh, it's the clip of the week. It's the clip of the week. Suck my dick. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Cool. I guess let, I'm going to pull it up on my end. You got clip to. Of the week. You got to funk it up. <laughs> All right. You ready? Wait, one second. Okay. Tell me when. All right. One, two. Wait, on three or after three? On three. One, two, three. Oh my god, look at all these baboons. <laughs> this is a like a, a landfill and the baboons are hunting for food in the in the landfill. Is that a bad thing? No, it's just fucking crazy. It's it like shows the weird symbiotic relationship between people and, and baboons. What do you think they're eating? Anything good? I'm mean, gonna guess like in my head it's like fish bones and banana peels and orange rinds. Plastic. Probably used condoms. Dude, look at the asses on these guys. How about the baboons? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of baboons. That's a yeah, you ever seen that many baboons? Bro, I've seen this many baboons. Tell you what, I've seen this many baboons when I went to Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey. This, uh, I mean, like when I was a kid, you used to just drive through the monkey enclosure and they'd get on your car oh, yeah. and shit on your stuff and jerk off on the windshield. Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> well, they made it a safari that like everybody gets on the big trucks and we all drive through. And then when COVID happened, they were like, nah, fuck all that. Um, let's make it, uh, let's, let's just have it, everybody drive through. Except they didn't, like, change any of the facilities for that. They were just like, let them in. Just, like, let them drive in. Fuck it, right? Oh, my God. Um, 
you drive through the baboon section and there's just some of the biggest reddest asses you've ever seen in your life they all had COVID down the road big ass buffalo baboons just walking around looking at people fucking they baboons and like spider monkeys like like monkeys like that freak me out and monkeys in general I would, I don't I would, I would never I would never take my fucking car in there I never uh, I, I don't want to go anywhere near any sort of ape like that they will fuck you up uh huh Okay, that one lady yeah. got her face ate. Um, so I've definitely told the story on the podcast before that when I went to Myrtle Beach, I went to that tiger enclosure thing, the one that Doc Antle had from Tiger King. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> like I said, the, 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 the kitten or like the, the, the cub that I held, that tiger cub that I held is probably dead now. Like but probably either, probably it's probably but, buried buried deep buried under the ground. Out. Yeah, next to what's her name's husband. Anyway, um, <laughs> they brought out a Gibbons. They wanted me to hold it, and I said I don't want to hold that. And they said why not? He's friendly. I go. So was the one that ate the lady's face, and they go, um, and they said, <laughs> yeah, but that chip was medicated and abused, and I was, and I literally said. Yeah, but I don't know you people. I was like, <laughs> uh, like I signed a waiver. Like, I, I wanted, I want the cub to sit on my lap, and I had something else. There was some other baby animal I had. Uh, but yeah, they they tried to force me to hold that fucking Gibbons, and I was like, no, absolutely not. I think they really wanted you to get your face torn oh, off. Oh yeah, dude. They're like, they're like, this guy. This is the fucking one. He looks like the one who wants his face torn off. He wants to be the next Oprah face reveal. Okay, let's get him in there. All right? This guy's just trying to get some plastic surgery done <laughs> on that mug. We want to hook him up. Yeah, really. Liability waivers be damned after that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. So with that said. Um I'm just looking through our shorts right now. I see that our uh, our e girl short is at four point two thousand views. Yeah, you weebs are really something I know, else. I know. I'm. You know what? And one, one, somebody, a couple people have been commenting on those shorts and a couple of the other ones that are like, "This is the content I'm here for," and the subs are going up. So appreciate it, everybody. So yeah, like and subscribe. I mean, we're not really doing any e-girl content, but who knows? Maybe. It's happening, y'all. Yeah, maybe we'll get Liz on eventually. We'll accidentally build up a... Uh, <laughs> Dude, we'll just transition all of our fans over to base. Liz. Yeah, Liz in their base of e-girls. But, uh... So yeah, thanks so much, everybody, uh, for listening to this week's episode. Um, You can find us on all social media, TikTok, Instagram... Uh, Instagram at pressanykey.tv. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will see you all next quick. Well, wait, no, next week we're off. We could, yeah, actually, we're going to be Thanksgiving because it's Thanksgiving and Nick's going away. And I think Burke is still away. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to be streaming Evil West uh, on the channel and I'll probably be streaming some other things. I might, uh, Glass Onion's going to be out. So, might make a video for that. And uh, I think when I'm done with God of War, I want to make a video on that too. But getting my fucking clips off the PS5 is a pain in my ass. Um, so. Uh, but yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Later. Or, God damn it. We'll see you in December. <laughs> we'll see you eventually. <laughs>